So now I need to speak to those people who will be either university students who will face nasty atheist types or the other category of people are just the plain curious people. How come one text says it was Cyrus and another text says it was Darius? And then if you've ever researched this, you'll go back and you'll try and find some historical data on Darius and you won't find any. Which has led atheists to say, your Bible is made up. There's no historical support for this Darius that you claim was the one who conquered Babylon. And they're kind of right. So now what do we do, Christians? What do we do? Well, again, I'm glad you asked. Let me, let me show you what's happening here. But to do that, I need to give you a little bit of a history lesson. Nabopolassar, he, now this is the, the time period of his reign. He was a puppet king of Babylon. And... He was a puppet king to the Persians, the Assyrians, same, same thing. And then he said, I don't want to be a puppet king. I'm sick of being a puppet king. I want to be a real king. And this puppet king with a few soldiers took on the might of the Persian Empire and did as much as he could to defeat them and couldn't quite do it until his neighbours, and I could do the map again, but over to so Mediterranean, uh, Fertile Crescent, Babylon, Assyria, and then over here is a place called Media, the, the Medes. The Medes liked Nabopolassar because they didn't like the Assyrians. So they said, we'll come and help. Nabopolassar and became the Babylonian Medo coalition and they defeated the Assyrian forces pretty amazing absolutely incredible and it was Nabopolassar that ordered his son and his son's name was Nebuchadnezzar and he ordered Nebuchadnezzar to go and conquer the rest of the world and we read about that when we read through Jeremiah we read about Nebuchadnezzar, his son, Prince Nebuchadnezzar. As, as Nebuchadnezzar was doing this, his dad died in 605 BC and Nebuchadnezzar became king. And as he conquered other kingdoms, including Egypt and then Israel, he, when, you, when you are a king who conquers other kings and have puppet kings, you become an emperor. And so he was an emperor. And so his son, uh, so we see that Nebuchadnezzar died at about the age of 83. He's mentioned in the book of Daniel. And there's, there's a wealth of supporting evidence about Nebuchadnezzar. Like the British Museum has these clay tablets and things that, talk about his conquests and all the rest of it. So there's a lot of support there. His son was uh, Evil Merodach, and he's, he's actually mentioned uh, in um, uh, Second Kings 25, I think. He's mentioned there. But he only reigned two years. And uh, the reason he only reigned two years is because uh, his lovely brother... Neroglissa killed him after two years. And so Neroglissa uh, only was only there for a few years himself. And then he, he, his son, Labashai Marduk, and Marduk, by the way, was one of the names of uh, the Babylonian gods. He became king in 556 for um, essentially just a few weeks. And then I think, uh, yes, he was, he was dispatched after a few weeks. Then along comes a guy who's not related to Nabopolassar, no descendant of Nebuchadnezzar. His name was Nabonidus or Nab Nab Nabonidus. And he uh, reigned from 569 to 539 BC. And then his son who's mentioned, and we just read about him in Daniel. His son's name was Belshazzar. 
Now, I, I pointed out that Belshazzar is described as the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Only in the sense that he is on the same royal throne. And if you've been counting generations, you'll realise that the Hebrews will use the term father to describe a great-great-great-grandfather. Just by the way. So if you want to calculate how old the earth is and count the generations, good luck. Because it doesn't work. And then after Belshazzar, the night that Belshazzar was having the party and it's mene mene tekel parson, Cyrus comes in. And Cyrus was the Persian king, but his mother was a Mede, and he was called the king of the Medes. And his Median name was Darius. Did I hear? Ah. And he came in to uh, Babylon that night on, in 539 BC. And, and that year is the year that he said, if you're, from, if you're a Jew, you can go back home. That's the year he said it. And then he died in battle nine years later in 530 at the age of 73. Imagine that, 73, conducting war. And he, he dies there. In the British Museum... There is this thing here, it's called the Cyrus Cylinder and it describes um, his Babylonian conquest and how he ordered, that the, the, gave the decree that all Jews could return to... Are you yawning, Gareth? Is this boring for you? I'm sorry. All right. So, <laughs> and so he... Sorry, I shouldn't have done that, Gareth. He uh, is well documented as a historical character and... So here we are. So, so now we have Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1. So if some smarty pants atheist comes up to you and says, there was no Darius the first in the Bible, you just look at them like um, however you look at them and say, uh, well, actually, it's the same as Cyrus. It's Cyrus was Darius the first. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. For more information about our church, head over to lagana.org.